Ezekiel chapter 41 Then the man brought me to the main hall and measured the jams. The width of the jams was six cubits on each side. The entrance was ten cubits wide, and the projecting walls on each side of it were five cubits wide. He also measured the main hall. It was forty cubits long and twenty cubits wide. Then he went into the inner sanctuary and measured the jams of the entrance. Each was two cubits wide. The entrance was six cubits wide, and the projecting walls on each side of it were seven cubits wide. And he measured the length of the inner sanctuary. It was twenty cubits, and its width was twenty cubits across the end of the main hall. He said to me, This is the most holy place. Then he measured the wall of the temple. It was six cubits thick, and each side room round the temple was four cubits wide. The side rooms were on three levels, one above another, thirty on each level. There were ledges all round the wall of the temple to serve as supports for the side rooms, so that the supports were not inserted into the wall of the temple. The side rooms all round the temple were wider at each successive level. The structure surrounding the temple was built in ascending stages, so that the rooms widened as one went upwards. A stairway went up from the lowest floor to the top floor, through the middle floor. I saw that the temple had a raised base all round it, forming the foundation of the side rooms. It was the length of the rod, six long cubits. The outer wall of the side rooms was five cubits thick, the open area between the side rooms of the temple and the priest's rooms was twenty cubits wide all round the temple. There were entrances to the side rooms from the open area, one on the north and another on the south, and the base adjoining the open area was five cubits wide all round. The building facing the temple courtyard on the west side was seventy cubits wide. The wall of the building was five cubits thick all round, and its length was ninety cubits. Then he measured the temple. It was a hundred cubits long, and the temple courtyard and the building with its walls were also a hundred cubits long. The width of the temple courtyard on the east, including the front of the temple, was a hundred cubits. Then he measured the length of the building facing the courtyard at the rear of the temple, including its galleries on each side. It was a hundred cubits. The main hall, the inner sanctuary, and the portico facing the court, as well as the thresholds and the narrow windows and galleries round the three of them, everything beyond and including the threshold, was covered with wood. The floor, the wall up to the windows, and the windows were covered. In the space above the outside of the entrance to the inner sanctuary, and on the walls, at regular intervals all round the inner and outer sanctuary, were carved cherubim and palm trees. Palm trees alternated with cherubim. Each cherub had two faces. The face of a human being towards the palm tree on one side, and the face of a lion towards the palm tree on the other. They were carved all round the whole temple. From the floor to the area above the entrance, Cherubim and palm trees were carved on the wall of the main hall. The main hall had a rectangular door frame, and the one at the front of the most holy place was similar. There was a wooden altar three cubits high and two cubits square. Its corners, its base, and its sides were of wood. The man said to me, This is the table that is before the Lord. Both the main hall and the most holy place had double doors. Each door had two leaves, two hinged leaves for each door. And the doors of the main hall were carved cherubim and palm trees, like those carved on the walls, and there was a wooden overhang on the front of the portico. On the side walls of the portico were narrow windows with palm trees carved on each side. The side rooms of the temple also had overhangs. Ezekiel chapter 42 Then the man led me northward into the outer court and brought me to the rooms opposite the temple courtyard and opposite the outer wall on the north side. 
The building whose door faced north was a hundred cubits long and fifty cubits wide. Both in the section, twenty cubits from the inner court, and in the section, opposite the pavement of the outer court, gallery faced gallery at the three levels. In front of the rooms was an inner passageway ten cubits wide and a hundred cubits long. Their doors were on the north. Now the upper rooms were narrower, for the galleries took more space from them than from the rooms on the lower and middle floors of the building. The rooms on the top floor had no pillars, as the courts had, so they were smaller in floor space than those on the lower and middle floors. There was an outer wall parallel to the rooms and the outer court. It extended in front of the rooms for fifty cubits. While the row of rooms on the side next to the outer court was fifty cubits long, the row on the side nearest the sanctuary was a hundred cubits long. The lower rooms had an entrance on the east side as one enters them from the outer court. On the south side, along the length of the wall of the outer court, adjoining the temple courtyard and opposite the outer wall, were rooms with a passageway in front of them. These were like the rooms on the north. They had the same length and width, with similar exits and dimensions. Similar to the doorways on the north were the doorways of the rooms on the south. There was a doorway at the beginning of the passageway that was parallel to the corresponding wall extending eastward, by which one enters the rooms. Then he said to me, The north and south rooms facing the temple courtyard are the priests' rooms, where the priests who approach the Lord will eat the most holy offerings. There they will put the most holy offerings, the grain offerings, the sin offerings, and the guilt offerings, for the place is holy. Once the priests enter the holy precincts, they are not to go into the outer court until they leave behind the garments in which they minister, for these are holy. They are to put on other clothes before they go near the places that are for the people. When he had finished measuring what was inside the temple area, he led me out by the east gate and measured the area all round. He measured the east side with the measuring rod. It was five hundred cubits. He measured the north side. It was five hundred cubits by the measuring rod. He measured the south side. It was five hundred cubits by the measuring rod. Then he turned to the west side and measured. It was five hundred cubits by the measuring rod. So he measured the area on all four sides. It had a wall round it, five hundred cubits long and five hundred cubits wide, to separate the holy from the common. Ezekiel chapter 43 Then the man brought me to the gate facing east. And I saw the glory of the God of Israel coming from the east. His voice was like the roar of rushing waters, and the land was radiant with his glory. The vision I saw was like the vision I had seen when he came to destroy the city, and like the visions I had seen by the river Kibar, and I fell face down. The glory of the Lord entered the temple through the gate facing east. Then the Spirit lifted me up and brought me into the inner court, and the glory of the Lord filled the temple. While the man was standing beside me, I heard someone speaking to me from inside the temple. He said, Son of man, this is the place of my throne and the place for the soles of my feet. This is where I will live among the Israelites forever. The people of Israel will never again defile my holy name, neither they nor their kings, by their prostitution and the funeral offerings for their kings at their death. When they place their threshold next to my threshold and their doorposts beside my doorposts, with only a wall between me and them, they defiled my holy name by their detestable practices, so I destroyed them in my anger. Now let them put away from me their prostitution and the funeral offerings for their kings, and I will live among them forever. Son of man, describe the temple to the people of Israel. 
that they may be ashamed of their sins. Let them consider its perfection, and if they are ashamed of all they have done, make known to them the design of the temple, its arrangement, its exits and entrances, its whole design and all its regulations and laws. Write these down before them, so that they may be faithful to its design and follow all its regulations. This is the law of the temple. All the surrounding area on top of the mountain will be most holy. Such is the law of the temple. These are the measurements of the altar in long cubits, that cubit being a cubit and a handbreadth. Its gutter is a cubit deep and a cubit wide, with a curb of one span around the edge. And this is the height of the altar. From the gutter on the ground, up to the lower ledge that goes round the altar, it is two cubits high, and the ledge is a cubit wide. From this lower ledge to the upper ledge that goes round the altar, it is four cubits high, and that ledge is also a cubit wide. Above that, the altar hearth is four cubits high, and four horns project upwards from the hearth. The altar hearth is square, twelve cubits long and twelve cubits wide. The upper ledge is also a square, fourteen cubits long and fourteen cubits wide. All round the altar is a gutter of one cubit with a curve of half a cubit. The steps of the altar face east. Then he said to me, Son of man, this is what the Sovereign Lord says. These will be the regulations for sacrificing burnt offerings and splashing blood against the altar when it is built. You are to give a young bull as a sin offering to the Levitical priests of the family of Zadok, who come near to minister before me, declares the Sovereign Lord. You are to take some of its blood and put it on the four horns of the altar and on the four corners of the upper ledge and all around the rim, and so purify the altar and make atonement for it. You are to take the bull for the sin offering and burn it in the designated part of the temple area outside the sanctuary. On the second day, you are to offer a male goat without defect for a sin offering and the altar is to be purified as it was purified with the bull. When you have finished purifying it, you are to offer a young bull and a ram from the flock, both without defect. You are to offer them before the Lord, and the priests are to sprinkle salt on them and sacrifice them as a burnt offering to the Lord. For seven days, you are to provide a male goat daily for a sin offering, you are also to provide a young bull and a ram from the flock, both without defect. For seven days, they are to make atonement for the altar and cleanse it. Thus they will dedicate it. At the end of these days, from the eighth day on, the priests are to present your burnt offerings and fellowship offerings on the altar. Then I will accept you declares the Sovereign Lord. Psalm 123 I lift up my eyes to you, to you who sit enthroned in heaven. As the eyes of slaves look to the hand of their master, as the eyes of a female slave look to the hand of her mistress, so our eyes look to the Lord our God till he shows us his mercy. Have mercy on us, Lord, have mercy on us, for we have endured no end of contempt. We have endured no end of ridicule from the arrogant, of contempt from the proud. Proverbs chapter 9 Wisdom has built her house. She has set up its seven pillars. She has prepared her meat and mixed her wine. She has also set her table. She has sent out her servants, and she calls from the highest point of the city. Let all who are simple come to my house. 
To those who have no sense, she says, Come, eat my food and drink the wine I've mixed. Leave your simple ways and you will live. Walk in the way of insight. Whoever corrects a mocker invites insults. Whoever rebukes the wicked incurs abuse. Do not rebuke mockers or they will hate you. Rebuke the wise and they will love you. Instruct the wise and they will be wiser still. Teach the righteous and they will add to their learning. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. For through wisdom your days will be many, and years will be added to your life. If you are wise, your wisdom will reward you. If you are a mocker, you alone will suffer. Folly is an unruly woman. She is simple and knows nothing. She sits at the door of her house, on a seat at the highest point of the city, calling out to those who pass by, who go straight on their way. Let all who are simple come to my house. To those who have no sense, she says, Stolen water is sweet. Food eaten in secret is delicious. But little do they know that the dead are there, that her guests are deep in the realm of the dead.